What we're going to go through now is we're going to go through some of his poems. I'm going to start with Out of Time, a poem about really a narrator looking out at the sea. Now, in many of Celeste's poems, you would see him quite visibly represented, but in this case, we've still got to look at him as the persona because even though these poems are written with him in, as the centerpiece, there are aspects of him which probably don't necessarily match up with him as a character. And certainly if you think of it this way, you need to look at him as either the poet or the persona in these poems. So we'll look at him that way. And he's looking out at the sea, which is basically serving as this giant metaphor or this giant analogy for life and death. And it's split into three sections. So first of all, we have the first section, which is lamenting the time in the sea for ruining these moments. And sort of reminiscent of this idea that uh, the tide going out, we sort of, with, with the memories fading as the tide does, we sort of feel that, oh my God, we're, we're losing something important. We're losing uh, special memories and certainly it ruins these sorts of moments. And as time progresses, as time flows like the sea, it basically just continues on going and drags us well and truly past those moments we cherish and basically to the point that it actually ruins them. The second section sort of reinforces this tide image and it comes back and he's able to resist this. It sets up this image of standing in the water and going, haha, you, can, you can't get me because even though the tide's going out, I'm standing here and I'm not moving. So it's almost him mocking it to, in, to some extent, although it, it still does sort of recognize the importance of, of time and certainly the flow of it. And the third stanza, he's caught in this tide. The tide wins and he is caught up. He's like caught in a rip. So uh, it sort of takes that image literally almost to when we look at it. And we get that metaphor that even as we resist and even as we mock time and sort of go, okay, well, we can, you know, we can stand in the water and, and even as the waves go out, we can still stand there and you won't get us. But even then the tide's going to be strong enough and it's going to wear us down to a point where we, we have to give up and we have to submit to it. And we have to basically let it take us out to sea where eventually we do perish and we get that image as well. Now, the poem uses a, a narrative form and certainly a, a strong sense of symbolism to basically represent time. And it uses uh, these nautical and oceanic references which are, are quite common in these poetry. It ultimately reflects how one can really not resist time and, and one cannot continue to fight the tide, so to speak. When we're looking at it, we're looking at it in terms of, we get this image of someone who's standing at the sea and, and looking at birds and all the things that sort of surround it. Birds are almost like, they're, they're seagulls, they're like vultures, they're scavengers. As he continues to fight the tide, he gives in, he gives up. We get that through the symbolism of what is occurring in that image that we're given. And particularly as it ends, we sort of get this image of, of seagulls sort of picking up sort of corpses out at sea and the idea that the time has, time has won, time has, has got you. 